Hello, and welcome to Horror Movies and Shit. I'm your host, Jim, and with me as always is... Mark. Mark, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Jim? I cannot complain. Well, you could, but I wouldn't care. Well, that's true, too. But let me ask you a question, Mark. Yes. A question you... mark? Yes, a question mark. Ah, ah, ah. You just got back from a trip. I did. You did? Where did you go? We, we uh, took a real quick uh, two-day um, vacation from Florida to Narlands. And did you bring me Narlands. back some jambalaya? Um, no, but uh, my wife brought back some beignet mix. Oh, is she sending it my way? No. Well, then what do I care? You get nothing. But oh, I that's did usual. visit the cemetery where uh, some of the Beyond, the Lucio Fulci classic, was filmed at. So you're telling me you went all the way to Nolens and just did touristy shit? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a movie location that's awesome. It's touristy shit. Well, it's funny because um, mm -hmm. we had a tour guide because I, I guess they closed the cemetery because people were in there like, for freaking like graffitiing stuff up and whatever. Oh wow! Um, and he was all talking about well, the last movie that was ever shot there was Easy Rider because they broke like some of the shit <laughs> in the same okay. so they didn't allow anybody by to film. So I asked him afterwards, and I said, uh, "No, the Beyond was filmed here." And he said, "Oh, I know. What a liar! <laughs> Run into those poor tourists, uh, you fuckers." That's what I, you get for doing the touristy shit. I also visited the uh, Museum of Death. What is that? It's a Museum of Death. So you die because you visit it? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get the, the hook here. No, so it's got like um, some of the real life letters from serial killers and things like that. Photographs of like the Manson murders and photographs oh. of kind of people dead from war and being killed and everything else. So that was, that was so kind of interesting. Shouldn't it be called like the Museum of Macabre shit? Well, I think... Because I mean, that's kind of what it is, right? It's just more fitting. It's just quicker to say. That's true. It's not as fun to spell, though. Yeah. I, I do have a question about real life death stuff. Oh, oh. God. You ever Go seen on. any... Have you ever seen any real life death stuff, Jim? Yes, I have. Like videos or whatever. You mean, no, no, no I mean, other than videos. I mean, other than what you've done on video recorded. Yes, yes, I have. Okay. And, and what do you think about that? It's a natural process. There's not much for me to think about that. So. Uh, I, I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're looking for here. Like I was in the room when my grandfather passed away. I was in the room when my grandmother passed away. No, no, no. Uh, no, no. You know, I, I so, mean more of the shocking stuff that you might find. Online. So I did. Well, no, I didn't. Not. I can't go that far. But I did once see a man fall down a set of steps and pass away in the middle of a, a seizure when I was a child. I've seen some. I've seen some stuff whenever I was growing up. Um, I watched yeah. a, a a video, a VHS back in the day, all about real life executions. Oh, and um, I thought we weren't do talking about videos. I'm talking real life. I'm talking about videos. Oh well, that's different. No, I've never seen a snuff film. Well, I don't know if there's any real snuff movies. Close enough. No, I've, well, I've never, well, I've never seen other them. than, uh, yeah, other than like the faces of death, I've not seen any videos that purported to be real. No, just because I, I was watching, because I watched some of the like YouTube real crime stuff. Mm -hmm. The guy was talking about, um, I guess, cartels release uh, like some of their torture videos. Oh, um, just as like a warning. Okay, and I guess they got this. Like, I guess you can go look at this video, which. I choose not to because I don't need that sort of PTSD. Um, no, apparently they um, they got this guy and mm -hmm. they have him laying down. Okay. And they've cut off his hands. Oh. But 
they have also skinned his face and gouged his eyes out. And they're in the process of doing it while it's being filmed. Oh, no, thank you. And they've gotten their adrenaline um, drip going into him so he's awake, so he doesn't pass out. Interesting. It's just weird. Like, mm-hmm. people are weird. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, I don't know if that was a weird thing that I came across. <laughs> yeah, that is a weird thing you came across, and it's a weird thing to ask. So anyway, <laughs> shall we move on? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, so this is our, uh, for me, it's like an end of year kind of wrap up, um, but also a look forward mm-hmm. uh, to 2024 and um, hopefully some good horror movies coming out. So I made a list, Jim. I don't know if you have made a list or just have stuff off the top of your head um, about the best movies I've watched this year and the worst movies. And these are movies that could have come out at any time, but that would be my first time watch. Um, well, that doesn't really mean it's the best of the year, then. Well, it's if a good. I... No, 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 no. If well, well, come out at, if, well, uh, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hey, the... No, no, no. You hang on. You hang on. Watched in twenty twenty three. Me. The, no, that we cannot do that list. Sorry. Why? Because if if they're your best of 2023 that means it has to have been made no, this year the, the best movies i've watched or no, the no, 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 movies no, no, no. i've watched in 20 no 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 i'm no, doing no, it no. so just shut your pile <laughs> go in fact uh, most of the best ones are actually 2023 ones whatever and how many are we doing in each category um i don't know i have like a hand well i have a handful on both So I'm just going to go down them. Go ahead. Hurry up. Shut your mouth. (laughs) Okay. So to me, the best movie of last year, I may have mentioned it before, uh, that I watched, uh, Godzilla Minus One. I've heard that a lot. I have not seen it yet. Absolutely fantastic. Um, And like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I've probably talked about it during the year. (laughs) Yeah, we have. Uh, the next one is when evil lurks. I have not seen that yet. I want to see it. I keep meaning to put it on. Arge- Watch terrified first. Okay, I'm, I might. It's by the same director in the book. Yeah, I know. Yep. Um, so it's Argentinian. Um, mm-hmm. Then we go back over to Europe in Finland. We have Sisu. Which again, I have not seen yet, and I keep meaning to. Yeah, which it, it's kind of a wacky movie. It, like you, you, you don't take it too seriously. Yeah. Uh, um, one that was just out of the blue, and I, there's probably some bias in there. Uh, but Boys from County Hell, the Northern Irish horror movie. I don't know that it, I, I've not seen that one, but okay. That's one where it's it's got like a it's like a vampire. Yeah. Story but it's got like its own unique kind of twist on it. Yeah, I, I know I've seen I've seen the film in different streaming services, but I've not I've not sat down to watch it. Yep, it's a good time. Um okay, uh one that I know you did like is uh the New Zealand or is it Australian? I think it's Australian. No, it's Australian, right? Talk to me. Yeah, that was a fantastic film, probably my best of the year so far. Yeah, it if it was just a little bit more original, I think I would maybe have put it as my top movie. Yeah, I don't that that's not a problem for me because what it did it did well. Yeah. Okay, a non horror movie, and this was The Outfit. I have no idea what you're talking about. It is uh kinda like a uh I would almost say it's like a crime thriller drama. Um okay. about it's set in like the 1950s Chicago, I believe. And okay. it's about a guy who owns his own tailor store. Um, and um, he sort of gets in the middle of some like mafia crime stuff. But it's very, very good. Sounds almost, absolutely riveting. It almost feels like a play. It's, it is excellent. It doesn't um, sound... Well, I mean... Jim, you need to get out of just watching your nostalgic movies all the time and watch them. Well, actually, I've been I've been rather obsessed this year with um, books. So with what? Books. Books. 
books. Yeah, audio books. I've been I've been Nerd. voraciously um, consuming books. Well, yeah, I have to listen to you prattle on about them. I know. God forbid you should become literate or anything. Anyway, continue. Oh, as sagacious as you. Uh, that's true. Okay. Um, the next one is, I think, is South Korean, um, and it's The Witch Part One. Have you seen this? Let's not pretend that I am that worldly. No. It's it's a very good watch. I guess there's a sequel, but it doesn't add much to it. It's the kind Witch of... Part 2? <laughs> correct. Um, <laughs> this one is um, kind of an interesting one where it, it, it feels Stranger Things-ish. Uh-huh. Uh, where people have certain powers... And then there was like shady government stuff going on, but it's, it was very good. Um, another non horror, um, Guardians of the Galaxy Part Three. I don't think I've seen that yet. I enjoyed the first it, two. It's weird because it's very mean spirited. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's so weird because it, it's both mean spirited um, with the characters, the way they interact with each other, because yeah. different from the other ones. But it's also like very sort of bubblegum uh, visuals and things like that. So uh, I think my favorite, and this is going to sound a little uh, a little sadistic of me. My favorite part of the entire Guardians of the Galaxy thing was the amount of blowback that Chris Pratt got from the uh, gay joke in the film that lasts for like three seconds. Did he? He did. He got so much shit for that thing where, um, I I don't know, he says something to Thor about looking into the eyes of somebody he cares about. So Thor's like staring into his eyes and he's like, not me. He got so much shit for that online. But he he didn't write that. Why would he get shit? I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know. Uh, (laughs) uh, Consecration is um, another one of my top movies. Never heard of it. Um, you have because I've talked about all these during the years, and you just have not. Yeah, been well, listening. nobody cares. Nobody, you pre- don't. Let's not pretend like I listen to you. Uh, that is true. Uh, <laughs> so the I think this came out in Netflix. This is the German newer version of All Quiet on the Western Front, which was an excellent war movie. Fuck. Anyway, Do you know much about World War One, Jim? No, sir. What what? When did World War One start, man, Jim? Don't even. I, I'm not going to make myself look stupid, Mark. So no, don't even try. Well, no, seriously, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not a history buff, and I remembered it for a test in social studies, and then promptly forgot it. Why is it in social studies? That's weird. I don't know. Fourteen to eighteen. Mm. Um, okay, uh, one that really just hit all my. Uh, Fears of Heights. Uh, oh, fall. Yep. fall. Yep. I Which they're, they're making a sequel to. Right. Um, yeah. Not, we'll pro- the sequel will probably work just as well. No Do you matter think it'll be called Fall In or Fall 2? Uh, autumn. Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay. What else do I have here? Okay. Got some special mentions. Just They weren't my top ones, but... Um, just because they're from different places, um, or they're a little bit special. Um, Advent Calendar, did you end up watching that? I did not, no. Uh, Tumbad, just because it was the first Indian movie I've seen. What? Uh, um, Tumbad. Never heard of it. Okay. Um, but it was a good, it was interesting. Um, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and this is another one which I... I I feel that like I liked it, and it was the first time I've seen one of his movies, uh, and it's Brandon Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Um, Infinity Pool, I <sighs> thought was good, but I yeah. thought it could have been explored a bit more. <sighs> I know, you don't like Mia Goth in it. I don't like Mia Goth in general, but that's not the reason. This, this to me, was... 
very reminiscent of like Eyes Wide Shut, where it tried to be really artsy fartsy, and that's just not my vibe. Yeah, I mean it's it's an arty type of movie. That's the same I, reason. That's the same reason I didn't watch Mother with uh, what's her name Jennifer. I've not watched that yet. I'm gonna watch it. Right, which is which is sad because Michelle Pfeiffer's in it, and I I love just about everything I've ever seen her in. But I can't bring myself to watch an artsy fartsy film like that. It just it it's too much. But yeah. then, you know, I do I do give in sometimes, and like I watched Darling and thought it was fantastic. Um. Not in, but Infinity Pool. I think there's a good idea there, but I think that they missed the trick a little bit by not mm-hmm. following through with that in, initial idea, right. and they went down different paths. Um, but you know, I I thought it was interesting. Okay. Okay. So now we're on to my worst movies. Okay, <laughs> I've probably seen more of these. Okay. Well, you've definitely seen the first one. I'm going to talk about. Can you guess what it is, Jim? No, probably not. Uh, yeah, you can. No, probably not. The Exorcist Believer. Correct. Yeah, it's garbage. We get it. <laughs> Again. It's, it's terrible. It, it gets so muddled with its message that it just destroys the entire fucking movie. Yeah, I mean, again, I think I've talked about this before. The first half, if it was like a true crime or like a drama yep. about finding the two missing kids, yep. I think it would have been fine. Yep. But the second half is just so bad. And yep. it just shits over. It's like, again, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride or whoever the fuck wrote this. The same with Halloween. Right. It's like... I don't think they understand. How, like, have they even watched the movies before? <laughs> because it's so, like, not, like, I, I understand trying to do a different thing, right? Which is right. great. Yep. Um, but there's some, like, core concepts. Like, like this is a Catholic movie. Right. This is not a fucking superhero uh, team-up of all these people that believe different shit. Right. Like it's, a, not, it's not the Avengers of your soul. Right? No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> and plus, again, I mean, evil wins at the end. Mm-hmm. They, they just all accept, okay, well, we can't do anything. One kid's going to die. Right. Okay, well, then, like, it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, okay. So some of the other ones. Uh, <laughs> Donald Pleasant starred in a 1970s movie, The Mutations. Which was really bad. <laughs> uh, Tom Baker was in it too, and it was just all over the place and boring. Okay. Uh, the next one we've talked about before, uh, like, is this even a movie? Um, it's Skinamarink. Ugh. Yeah, I, I mean, neither one of us made it very far into that I, film, so. I generally don't like to rate a movie if I haven't watched it all the way through. But I don't think after 30 minutes, there was going to be anything different. No, I didn't even make it 30 minutes, so. <laughs> Absolutely awful. I guess it's some sort of Gen Z thing where everybody's got triggered about being young and having a fear of being left home alone or some fuck like that. I, Everybody goes through that when they're kids. Why is it all of a sudden traumatizing? Like, who who did, who, when they were little, did not get, did not get... Uh, it's it's the home alone of Gen Z. <laughs> it is not. It is not. It's the home alone too with uh, Donald Trump. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, okay. Uh, some other ones. The Lair. Um, I did not see. Which is uh, fuck. What's his name? He did uh, Dog Soldiers: The Descent. And oh, this, uh, yeah. And this what? was. Just like fucking subpar sci-fi garbage. Okay. What 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 a disappointment. And that's sad because the Descent and Dog Soldiers were fantastic. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And he he also um, directed um, some really good Game of Thrones episodes too. Okay, if you say so. Uh, found footage Amber Alert. Never heard of it. This is the stupidest, boring piece of shit ever. 
Um, okay, uh, next one. Uh, this was one that got a theatrical release. It's got a big name star, William Defoe. Oh, Defoe? God. Why did you even bother? And th- what movie am I talking about? I don't know the name of it, but it's the one where he's stuck in an apartment. Yes, Inside. Thank you. Because I but, like Willem Dafoe. And how I, do you get yeah. stuck in an apartment? I know. It's, well, that's why I was kind of curious. That's like yeah, you hear people are stuck inside their car. How do you get stuck inside a car? You pull the handle, the, the lock disengages. Anyway, sorry. But I thought, okay, well, it might be interesting. You know, I like people stuck in one location. and But this was just awful. I don't know what the fuck. Um, Deadware. This Never was... Heard. Huh? Never heard of it. It's kind of like one of these Zoom... Um, like Unfriended, one of those type of... Uh, Which I've not Zoom. seen. And this just wasn't very good. Uh, next one, a lot of people love... Uh, but Ty West is not one of my favorite directors. In fact, mm-hmm. I don't like one of his movies. This was X. So I watched X and Pearl, and I don't have any really good feelings about either one of them. I've at not least, watched Pearl yet because at, I didn't I like will say, it so much. <laughs> so it's, it's, an, it's an entirely different theme and film. But what I will say is that Mia Goth's character in Pearl is so fucking annoying. I just want her to die. Uh, yeah. If I ever get around to watching Pearl, who knows? Maybe it's streaming on HBO now. So. No, I know, I know. It's been sitting there, I've been scrolling past it for months. Mm-hmm. Which I did for X, and then I just, okay, I'll watch X. And yeah, then X, I was, like, I was And I'm not... just like, this is just fucking, this is so stupid. Yeah, it, it's not, it was not great at all. I did not enjoy it. I really think that if they would have hired an actual elderly person to play the uh the character the character the older lady it mm-hmm. would have been much more effective rather yeah, than having I, Mia goth play that character i, I think it wouldn't have mattered you know what i did see though speaking <laughs> of speaking of older characters or mm-hmm. not older characters but I, this is a terrible segue but i saw a video where they talked to uh, i forget which podcast it was Talk to the actor that played the character of the mother in Barbarian. Mm-hmm. And when he was offered that part, the I guess the director or, or producer said, how do you feel about being ass out? He's like, well, I'm not really going to be ass out because you know I'm not a woman, right? So he had on the, the prosthetics yeah. and stuff to make him appear like a woman. He's mm-hmm. like, but he wasn't kidding. I was ass out. I just had on a thong. <laughs> oh, okay. That's interesting. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. Weird Rick segue. Stuff is ever Jim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Next it's up, just, is it's because it's because it's that scene where Mia Goth gets into bed with the girl or whoever, and they show her naked with that old age suit on or whatever. That's it's stuck in my head, and that's what made me think about it. Uh, I just, I just think like the the least effective uh, movie killers, least yeah. believable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just fucking kick them in the knee, and you're, and yeah. you're, you're right. You you've defeated them. <laughs> just, just take away. <laughs> move one. Um, okay, next up is uh, a movie called Cage Dive, aka Open Water Three Cage Dive. And this, <laughs> the only good <laughs> I think I you remember me talking about this one, Jim. This is the one where they just give up at the end, right? Um. Well, that, that's kind of like the first one. No, this is... Yes. A... <laughs> oh, that's right, because that is the one thing I hated about that movie. I loved the first one. This is the one... Oh, my God. They Because their boats hit with like a, like a freak wave and stuff, and they're in the water, and they always have to do this. It's one girl and her boyfriend and his brother, but her and the brother have been having, you know, getting uh, it on, blah, blah, blah. Don't care. It's not... Don't care. Don't care. Right. You're just making everybody very unlikable, whoever it is. Right. But but then, <laughs> then they find oh. a survivor, and and they find a uh, oh they shoot her in the raft. They shoot the survivor yes. and, and burn up the raft. Yes, I remember that. I remember you talking about that. If only the rest of the movie was that entertaining, right? Um, another movie I railed on was the Pyramid. 
another yeah. kind of found footage mockumentary bullshit. Wait, that's the one with the weird cat things, right? Yeah. Which, yeah. It's just, ugh, these people are annoying. Yeah, um, next one is the most boring one I've seen all year, uh, apart from Inside uh, or Skin America, I guess. Uh. And this is uh, Lockdown Tower, also known as The Tower. Um, again, this is where everybody's trapped in a bill in like a, uh, apartment tower and it's a French movie and they can't get out because if you go out, you die. And then they have like gangs forming and none of it makes any sense. And none of it's interesting. Okay. Uh, the last one, just because it was a disappointment because I liked the first two and it's hell house three, just annoying characters doing annoying stuff and being playing. I haven't seen uh, any of them. Uh, the first two are worth checking out. So that is what I've watched this year, and now I'm going to say pause. I'm going to go grab a drink. Okay, I'm going to finish mine. All right. Mm-hmm. Alcohol overuse causes 140 death, 40,000 deaths annually. And it's my first foldable, and i got to say I'm on board with it so far. Uh, what? It's a foldable phone, so it's the Gal- the yeah, Samsung what, Galaxy. What, what was the? the oh, it, I I don't know. I have I have a, a widget on my home screen that gives me news, and it said something about. Uh, where is it? Let me pull it up. Don't, don't tell me that while I'm drinking. <laughs> so is it, 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 just, is, it the, is it a, a Samsung? Sam- it is. It is. I I went back to a Samsung because yeah. I really for this for whatever reason, I've been super psyched about foldable phones. Mm-hmm. So I decided it was time since it's the fifth, the fifth iteration of this phone. They probably worked out a lot of the bugs. Yeah. So I'm very excited about it. Yeah. They look pretty cool to me. Okay. Are we ready? Yep. Let me get back to the top of the list. So how many are on this list? 89. Yeah. 89 films coming out in 2024. Um... Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. So, Mark, you've told us about your picks for I the want year. Low lights. Yep. Your your yays and nays. I'm surprised that we didn't hear you mention though um, the menu. I didn't hear about which the I thought menu, you were. Really- uh, so, um, like I told you, I have like a phone app where I uh-huh. log them. Right. Uh, and I watched that uh, like. December 24th of last year. So it didn't make the cut. Ah, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, there was another one I was going to say that I was surprised wasn't on your list, but it escapes me. But anyway, hmm. so let's talk about this, the second half of the reason we wanted to come together today. Mm-hmm. And that's to talk about movies that are going to be coming out in 2024. Are you ready? Horror movies. Horror movies. Just horror mm-hmm. movies. I brought up a list from IMDb. It's a total of 84 movies, and they're separated by release date. Okay? So we're going to start in January of 2024 and work our way down. There are 89 movies on this list, 88 or 89 movies. Yeah. But I'm going to skip over the ones that don't give us any information about the movie, you know, other than the title. I, so, I, have, I have a list here that's a lot less <laughs> from Esquire. Well, we're going to go with IMDb. It's more, it's better. We'll just skip over the ones that don't give us any information. You ready? Mm hmm. So, number one is January 5th. We have Night Swim. A yes. woman swimming in her pool at night is terrorized by an evil spirit. This looks garbage to me. I have zero desire to see this film. Yes. I have, uh, I've seen the trailer for that that played, yeah. I don't remember what movie I saw in the movie theater, but it was like. <laughs> Okay, just don't get in the pool. Exactly, right? (laughs) I mean, okay, there's something bad in the pool. Just stay out of the fucking pool. (laughs) Yeah, Um, it's a Bloomhouse one. I mean, again, you know, talk to me, Ryan. I mean, that's a... Isn't that Bloomhouse? Um, uh, A24, I think. Oh, it's A24, okay. Um, Bloomhouse can come out with sometimes decent enough movies, but um, they're, they're... they seem to have got very homogenized. Yeah. Agreed. The next one on the list, though, I am I actually am kind of excited to see. It looks like a fun, creepy-as-shit movie. 
It's uh, it comes out February second of twenty twenty four. It is imaginary. A woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy that she abandoned him. That seems like a plot to another movie. I'm I'm sure it is. There's nothing new under the sun, right? So who cares? But this look like it looks like from the trailer that it could be a really fun romp. It's the same people that did, it. It's a bloom. I think actually this is a Bloomhouse movie. Let me look. Hang on. Oh, you were just dogging them in a second. Uh, you were dogging them. I was not. <laughs> so yes, it is a Bloomhouse movie. Oh, so you love every Bloomhouse movie? I do not love every Bloomhouse movie. Do you, do you love most Bloomhouse movies, Jim? I don't know about most, but I, I enjoy some of them. So so you're in the same camp as me? Then. Yeah, kind of. But I wasn't just bashing them with Night Swim. You were. What? <laughs> Okay, you ready? Let's move on. So hopefully, Jim, for uh, your uh, your, the New Year's coming, Uh maybe you will uh, change your ways and uh, look look at the flaws you've had this year and look to change Uh, them. Some some resolutions. I I do have one resolution, and that's to uh, to be a better co-host, Mark, and to to not give you as much shit. Yeah, 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 (laughs) yeah. Yes. Somehow I think that one's going to get broken pretty quick. Okay, so next up we have February 9th, 2024. We have Lisa Frankenstein. This is a comedy horror romance. It's a coming of rage love story about a teenager and her crush who happens to be a corpse. After a set of horrific circumstances bring him back to life, the two embark on a journey to find love, happiness, and a few missing body parts. That's like that uh, movie Warm Bodies, which I haven't seen. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. I have, I probably, this is one I'll wait for it to come on cable or something. I don't care about that. I, I, I I'll just it. stick with Frank and Hooker. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, next up for February 16th, 2024, we have Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Don't care. I haven't seen the first one, so I don't have any. No address in the first yeah. one, no address in the second. This next one is April 5th, 2024. This is a prequel to a 19, what, 80 movie? It's the first omen. A young woman is sent to Rome to begin a life of service to the church, but her encounters a darkness that causes her to question her faith and uncovers a terrifying conspiracy that hopes to bring about the birth of evil incarnate. You know, it wouldn't be surprising to me if David Gordon Green was a t- <laughs> this one. Uh, no, uh, it's... No, I know it's not. Arkasha Stevenson is the director, and I don't know how to say this guy's name. It's Bill N-I-G-H-Y. Ralph Innocent and Bill Nell Tiger Free. Bill Nye. Huh? Bill Nye. Not, it's just Nye? Nye. Hmm. He's, uh, he's in the um, uh, Underworld movies. Oh, is he? Uh, yeah. Okay. Was he in Game of Thrones? Was he? I don't know. He's an older English actor. Let me see. Oh, him. I know who that is. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Good, good good actor. Excuse me. Um, then there's a, a new monster movie coming out in April of 2024, but there's no, it, it's an, it says untitled monster thriller for universal pictures. No, yeah, no just, information. Just, just skip those. Yeah. Uh, then we have April 25th, 2024 is immaculate. Cecilia, a woman of devout faith is warm welcomed to a picture-perfect Italian countryside where she is offered a new role at an illustrious convent. But it becomes clearer to Cecilia that her new home harbors dark and horrifying secrets. Uh, what, what are the percentages this is a possession movie? It feels like it feels like that, but I honestly, there, there's not much else to it other than the release date and the, the, the little snippet. So I honestly don't know. I've not seen, I, I can't think of, other than Demons, one of the, Demons was Italian, right? Yes. So other than that, I can't think of another Italian horror movie that I've seen, so I might I might be interested to see that one. What? You've seen New York Ripper. That was not Italian, fucker. That takes place in New York. It's an Italian movie. You it doesn't matter. It's not an Italian it's language movie. Is uh, an Italian movie? No, because it's not an Italian language movie. Oh, Jesus. It's okay, so your resolution 
Jim. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter what language it's yes, in. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. So, um, the original Godzilla movie with Raymond Burr that they put in for American mm-hmm. audiences, is that a Japanese or is that an American movie? Are they speaking Japanese or American? Are the Japanese people speaking Japanese? Yes. Or English? Are the American people spe- speaking English? Yes. So what and is it? Would it would be a multilingual movie. So where, but, but pick a country then. Why? Because that's how you base everything. I said it was an Italian language film, Mark. That's what I now said. said. It was an Italian movie. I said Italian language. What, whenever you go back and edit this, you can uh, you can send me a text <laughs> uh, with an apology. I, I almost called you Ray. That's how much you're annoying me. Right? Oh, Jesus <laughs> okay. Anyway, moving on. Okay. Next up, uh, May 10th, 2024. We have horror scope. Horror uh, group, scope. Horror scope. A group of college friends begin dying in ways connected to their fortunes after getting their horoscopes read. And this is directed by Spencer Cohen and Anna Hallberg. Stars Humberly G- Gonzalez. Avantika. I don't know who that is. Jacob Battalion and Harriet Slater. I don't know. That sounds like something I'd probably watch. Yeah, it sounds garbage, so you'd probably like it. Probably. Yeah. So May 17th, 2024, we have The Strangers Chapter 1. A young couple drive cross-country towards a new beginning. Unfortunately, they have no choice but to stop in a secluded Airbnb in Oregon and endure a night of terror against three masked strangers. Yep, so nope. That's weird, though. What? The title of it. Why? It's supposed to be a trilogy. But it says Origins. Mm-mm. What do you say? It was The Strangers what? Chapter One. Oh, Chapter One. So you think that's the first one? It's it's the first in a trilogy of New Strangers movies, yes. Oh, I see. So it's not it's supposed to be Chapter One, including... The older movies? <laughs> I, I don't know, to be honest. I don't know. I don't it's think it's a retelling. You don't because, even know your dog. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm just reading You're exactly reading what's on this list. Do you know? Do you up. know? No, but that's why I'm asking. Why is it called Chapter One? Because it's going to be a trilogy. And each one is supposed to, if I understand the process correctly, each one is supposed to focus on a different stranger. So you know how you had the three people in The Strangers with the masks? Right, but it's the same setup. It is, essentially, yes. Um, unless they're trying to do some sort of meta thing where people oh, see nice. the strangers and then they're doing it. Um, I didn't see the strangers. Um, I know you don't like it. it very much. Um, I, I loved it up until the end. I saw the second one, which I did not like at all. The final jump scare ruined the whole thing for me. Yeah, I didn't like the second one, so I haven't gone back and watched the first. So next up, we have a June... 7th, 2024, uh, The Watchers, which is a fantasy horror. It follows Mina, a 28-year-old artist, as she gets stranded in an extensive, immaculate forest in Western Ireland. After finding shelter, she becomes trapped alongside three strangers stalked by a mysterious creature each night. What makes a forest immaculate? I don't know. Maybe they maybe they sweep? I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this is actually starring Dakota Fanning and Siobhan Hewlett. I don't know who Siobhan Hewlett is, but... It's set in Ireland. It is, and I couldn't pronounce one of the people's names on this list to save my life. Spell it out. Uh, O-L-W-E-N. Olwen. Right. F-O-U-E-R-E. Sorry, uh, so that's her last name? That's their last name. So spell it again. F is in Frank, O U E R E, and it's got the accent marks over the E's. Um, then that's well, uh, foyer. So is the accent going up or down? Up. So it's going up. So it's a high E. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. We, we'll discuss more in our v- vocabulary <laughs> and um, pronunciation podcast coming soon. <laughs> right. So next up is June 28th, 2024. Um, I don't have much about it, but I think the name pretty much says it all. And I know you're not a fan of this franchise, so you probably won't watch it. Is it Meg 3? It is not. Shut it's up, Meg. 
it's a quiet place day one. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, um, yeah no, it, it's weird. It's like people love those movies, and I, I don't know why. Um, I, I don't know. I thought the first I one was really good. I, I just can't get. I just can't get my head around that concept, even though I can get my head around different concepts that are probably yeah. even more stupid. Right. This one, I don't know. It's just like in the front of my brain. I'm right. like, there's noises everywhere. So they'd be attacking everything. And how does this thing even live or exist? It would just be attacking every noise. And like, they will right. all be jumping into a fucking waterfall. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, next, uh, we're going to skip that one because it's an M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong movie. Oh, yeah. No, I saw that one, too. I, I don't know anything about it. I don't even have a plot. Um, so, so I do. No it's called Trap. Yes. Um, so it's Josh Hartnett's going to be in it. Uh, yeah. Salika Shyamalan. So it looks like he's bringing in some of his own family. Apparently it's a psychological horror Are story. you kidding me? At a concert. How is... She... Is she still alive? Who? Well... So, she plays... So, th- there's one person in this movie that actually astounds me that she's still alive, and that's Haley Mills. I recognize that name. The original Wait, Parent play- Trap? No, I've not seen that. Where she played the twins that tried to get her parents back together? From so, like she's... She, she, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, why wouldn't she still be alive? I, I really thought she had passed away already. But well, anyway, that's beside the point. Her. So that's beside the point. I I absolutely I I adore her. So I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing her on film again. But anyway, that's beside you the point. You will be watching it. What? So you will be watching it. I probably will not. That'll be one that I'll wait till it comes out on streaming. I'm not paying. Oh no, that. you'll still watch it though. I'm not I'll saying. watch it. It's it's not like the monsters where I'm going to ban it from my house. Ray liked that movie, Jim. Oh, he did actually. <laughs> so next up is uh, August 9th, twenty twenty four. It's called Speak No Evil. It's a remake of the twenty twenty two Speak No Evil. Um, a family is invited to spend a weekend in an idyllic countryside that goes from a dream vacation to a psychological nightmare. Um. One of my favorite actors is in this, so I probably will watch this. Can you guess who it is? Um, Jennifer Carpenter. No. No, it's not. Um, I don't know. Somebody James from your... McAvoy. Oh. Um, I think he's so fantastic. It's a remake of a movie that came out last year. Yeah, it is. I'm assuming it's a, probably a remake of a foreign movie. I haven't heard this one. I don't know. So next up is either the most exciting or the worst movie of the year. You want me to tell you what it is? Uh, not yet. Uh, August 16th, 2024 I'm is go- the expected release date. You want me to guess? I think you probably see it on your list, but go ahead. Aliens Romulus? It's Alien, Alien Romulus. Alien Romulus. You heathen. Yes. So the reason I say that it could Dude, be... How many people from uh, the Alien movie have you met? Uh, I have met uh, Brad Dorrit from the original Alien movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Veronica Cartwright. Mm-hmm. Um, I missed Tom Skerritt because he was always away from his table when I was there that year. Um, I'd have to look at my list. I, I, the only one that jumps out is is Veronica Cartwright. Well, I, I've met both of them, so shake your pie hole. Um, Alien Romulus. It's a very interesting, um, why they put Romulus in there, because that really speaks to kind of Star Trek, (laughs) right? (laughs) And I know obviously Star Trek took it from ancient Rome. Right. uh, With Romulus and Remus. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that they use that. So this is, um, Fred Oliver, uh, Alvarez, Alvarez, right? right. Who, so, who is known for? So he's one out of two for me. Um, Evil, so Dead, we, we, Remake, Evil Dead, right? And uh, Don't Breathe. See, I thought Don't Breathe was the first one was pretty good. Uh, so that he, so he'd, be, he'd be two for he'd be I, two, I, for, two I, for two for me on that. Yeah, that's and that's fair enough. I, I just didn't like what they did with Don't Breathe. 
Well, that's fair. I will say, though, the thing that excites me about this is, is it, it is in no way connected to any of the other Alien movies. It takes place between, I think, Alien and Aliens, but it doesn't have any connection to the film other than the timeline. Uh, and I think, I think that's probably the smartest way to try and reboot that franchise. But it's either going to be really good or it's going to be terrible. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say from his work on The Evil Dad mm-hmm. that at least it should be a good R-rated movie. <laughs> well, and I imagine because both with Evil Dead and Don't Breathe, I thought visually they were very appealing films. So at least the cinematography should be good, right? Uh Yes, I, again, I, I'm trying to frame it more in the Evil Dead yeah. movie than the Don't Breathe movie. Um, That's fair. And, I mean, you could honestly just have alien movies that are unrelated to any of the previous ones, right? You could just have right. aliens in this world. And that's, doing something. that's exactly what they're doing here. It, it, from a timeline perspective, it's placed between the first two films, but it has nothing to do with the rest of the franchise. Like it, it doesn't, it doesn't have the same characters. It doesn't, it, it's an entirely separate um, entity. And, it just happens to exist in that universe. And remember they were going to do the Neil Blomkamp. Um, he was going to do a sequel to aliens. Yep. And he was going to have, he was going to bring back Michael Bean. Yeah. So yep. it wasn't going to carry on from Alien 3. Right. Which I thought would have been pretty interesting. I wish I, they could do that. I wish they would too, but they at this point, I don't think Sigourney Weaver wants to try and, and redo Ripley. Uh, well, it depends how much money they throw her. That's true. <laughs> so next up uh, is September 27th. We have Saw 11. No, I, I'm, I'm done with the Saw franchise. Well, Jim... How many Saw movies have you watched? I think I've seen four. Okay, so you're done with it. You've already been done with it. There's yep. ten. You've yep. not even watched half. Correct. So it's kind of redundant to say you're done with it. Why? Because I am. I'm, I'm just not... I... No, but you were obviously done with it six movies ago. Right. I didn't say I was done with it because of Saw 11. I'm just already done with it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, next up, October 18th, 2024, Smile 2. I don't know how I feel about this. I was not a big fan of the first. I wasn't either. Uh, I they hate- could have done a lot more with that discomfort, and they just did not. Well, it was very that. much like It Follows, but I, yeah, mean, I, I, kind yeah. of, I kind of hate you have a professional mental health uh, person and they don't understand how insane they look to other people mm-hmm. it's like wouldn't you try and find a diff- like that would be a more interesting angle if she was having these visions and everything else but she used her training mm-hmm. to really convince other people that it was happening and that she wasn't nuts. Right. Much more difficult to write. But yeah, it's very true. It, I mean, I didn't hate it. It was okay for a one-time watch. Um, it's fine. Um, if this comes to streaming, well, maybe watch it. So, I mean, the yep. direction and stuff is okay and the acting was decent enough. But Yeah. Um, so just... ne- next up, October 25th, 2024. I'm excited by this because it's a return to the classic Universal movie Monsters. Uh, is the Wolfman. A man becomes afflicted by an ancient curse when he's bitten by a werewolf. Are... Okay, one second. But um, are they... Is it universal? It it appears to be. I don't know this char- this actor, though. Christopher Jacob is the only attached actor for this movie. What is he known for? It comes at night. Oh, he was in Possessor. Okay. I enjoyed that one. 
I will say the disaster. That's the other Brian and Cronenberg one. Yep, it was it was decent. Um, it's a Lee Wano movie, so that's interesting. So here's the thing: if it's did you say it was universal or not? I, I don't. It doesn't say whether it's universal. It's just <laughs> in that. It, it's definitely right. in that. Uh, so that so, genre. They, so they tried to do that dark. Um, Universal Monsters thing. Yeah. Right, which The Mummy with Tom Cruise ended right, <laughs> pretty yeah. quickly. Um, so I don't know if they're... Are they trying to reboot it? Or is it just somebody using the same name? I'm, and, I'm, and that's, I'm that's what Universal put... has rights to that name. Then. Yep. I, I know they still do. I believe they still do, but I don't know if they have exclusive rights because you can... Anybody can redo that. But... I'm excited about the director because I enjoy his most a lot of his work, but I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, I'm looking forward to it because I like the old Universal monster movies. Next up is a movie that I'm not crazy about. I was not. I like the first one was Meh. I did not see the second one. That's Terrifier Three. It is <laughs> on October 25th, which is weird because it's a Christmas movie. Yep. But they're releasing it for Halloween. It doesn't matter, does it? No. So, uh, anyway. Next up. I mean, I mean, it makes more sense still, to, even if it's Christmas setting, to yep. release Terrifier 3 and Halloween for all the mm. Gen Zers. I'm looking forward to this one because it looks good. The the, few, the bit of it I've the bit so of before, stuff I've seen online. Before we go on, um, I just hope for Terrifier 3. Uh-huh. They make it an hour and a half, not two and a half hours, um, which okay. I think will be much better. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so anyway. next up for December twenty fifth, twenty twenty four, there's a movie I'm very, I'm actually really excited about because it looks like it's going to be super interesting. I'm going to read you the description. You tell me if you can figure out what it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. A gothic tale of obsession between a haunted young woman and the terrifying vampire infatuated with her, causing untold horror in its wake. Dracula. Incorrect. It is a Robert Eggers movie. Uh, Nosferatu. Correct. Yep. Nosferatu is just Dracula. It is not. Well, it is. It is not. So, so do you know the history of the? Yes, I do. Nosferatu. Yes, I do. And so, why do they call it Nosferatu? Because they couldn't call it Dracula. Exactly. Where is... I want to see who he's going to play. Oh, okay. So Willem Dafoe's in it, but... Well, of course. I, who, <laughs> I would like to know who's going to play Count Orlock. Or Olock, or whatever the hell his name is. It's probably Willem Dafoe. It is not. Nope. Let's see if it even tells us. Anna Harding is Emma Corrin. Professor Albin Eberhardt von... Something is Willem Dafoe. Count <laughs> Orlock is Bill Skarsgård. Oh, okay. Isn't Anna, what's her name in it, too? No. Uh, no. No. Do that. So <laughs> that's it for the, the planned release dates. There's a bunch of possibly going to be released, but I don't have anything specific about it. So I don't yeah. think we're going to go through those. No. I, I am interested in this one, though, but it doesn't have a, a, a firm release date. Is Return to Silent Hill, because I enjoyed Silent Hill. Uh, what, <laughs> what about the sequel to Silent Hill? Yeah. It it was not very good. Yeah, uh, no. With John Snow in it. Yeah, and I'm interested to see what happens with this. And I I've seen murmurs of it online. Is there's a a remake of Witchboard coming out? So I yeah. absolutely adore the first one, the the original. But yeah. I'm curious to see what what they could make better about it. Well, I mean, they, they've made like a bunch of Witchboard movies. Yeah, but this is this is supposed to be a reboot of the original from 1986. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. They could just make something new. <laughs> they could, I, but why? I, I, I kind of feel like Witchboard do like the fact... doesn't have the branding to yeah. make it worthwhile rebooting, right? Just make something original around that same sort of... You know, a Ouija board or whatever. Well, I do like I do like this this uh, guy. Uh, what's his name? Jamie Campbell. Jamie Cam- Jamie Campbell Bauer. 
is going to be playing one of the lead roles in this movie. And I like him a lot. I, I, I think he's a great character actor. I'm not sure I recognize him. So you don't, you're not a big, um, you were not a big stranger things fan. So you wouldn't know him from that, but no, I've seen you would so. know him. Have you? So he was Vecna. Okay. He was the, the orderly that became Vecna. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. yeah, he, he was also in Sweeney Todd, which you don't like. Uh, nope. He was in Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. He played Jace. He was Caius in Twilight. Uh, what else do we have him in? Well, I know he from... was Christopher Marlowe in the Will's TV series, but you don't do TV I series. Know I know him from Stranger Things. So yeah, think. yeah, you would. So anyway, but that, I, I'm excited about that. What do you have on your list that I haven't gone over yet? Um, I think that was it. it because these are all ones that I think... Ha- uh, the only other one was Maxine. Yeah, and I don't have a release date on this list yeah, that I have, so... Yeah, on this one, either, so... And I'm not... I've, I've not been excited about the other two. I don't give a shit about it, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I did not care for the original, the, the other two in the series, so I'm not going to care about this one. Yeah. Um... No, that was it. It was all it was all the big ones that you kind of mentioned. Yep. So, Mark, do you have anything that you've watched this week that really excited you? Um, I do have some things that I've watched, which oh, I have talked about. So, uh, I know on our uh, Christmas episode, yeah, you recommended Jim. Mm-hmm. Await further instructions. Oh, what did you think? I'm very conflicted about this movie. Okay. Um, I think there's some good ideas there. Yeah. About um, people being programmed to listen to the government. Mm -hmm. uh, People being connected to media. And just taking that as gospel. Yep. Um, But the characters were all pretty um, like caricatures mm-hmm. more than characters, especially the dad. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, I think they wrote it without knowing how to end it. Yeah. I don't, I, I can see that point. And I think the ending just doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And I think they're all too, they were all too accepting that they're stuck in this place. Yeah. Like they, they all just seem to accept it. Um, That's not untrue. And again, the, the caricatures, the, the sister was a caricature of kind of the, the blonde. Her boyfriend was a caricature of the jock. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. <laughs> but you didn't, so uh, they, they were caricatures, but I thought that was, that was a big part of the message of the film, right? Because I don't know. I don't know what the uh, so, so again. It, it's like okay, we've all seen people in like a you know hold up, right? It's like right. Night of the Living Dead, and then people's uh, you know racism comes up, or they whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever. Um, and you know, whenever people get stressed, they get like crazy. Yeah, but like at the point, no, no uh, spoilers because I don't care. Well, it is a spoiler, but I don't care. Um, like when the dad is literally torturing his own son. Yep. Because the TV said, oh, hey, there's somebody here who's a spy. I'm like, there's nobody, nobody's going to do that. That That's just too far. You really think that, huh? Even, yeah. even given our current political climate and, yep. and how no, much people are. No, I do. I, I think that like literally tying your own child down. Because the TV said there might be a spy in there. And nobody... So this is the other thing which I hated about it. It's like even the reasonable characters, like the son and his girlfriend, whatever. The TV's like, one of you is infected. And nobody's like, how the fuck would... Even if the government are looking at us, Mm -hmm. how would they know? Right. Also, who... These alien things that I guess that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. So they're controlling the TV. Yep. 
where are they making the 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 syringes with stuff to fit uh, put in it and give it to them? And their spaceship, probably. But they don't seem to be like that. Seems to be too much of a. I know what you're doing, but then at the end, like I know about humanity and I can do this, and then at the end they're like totally like they don't know about humanity. I don't know. It, so again, there was uh, I gave it like a five out of ten. Really? I, I thought there was some interesting aspects to it, but there was too many things that were annoying me all the way through. Well, you you are easily annoyed, and that's pretty much my job. So. Well, that's why you recommended it, I'm sure. Yep. Uh, okay, what else did I watch? Uh, I watched a movie from the Netherlands mm. called Moloch. Moloch, huh? And um, this is a movie where it's kind of like a folk horror. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a archaeological kind of dig that found these... Um, very old desiccated bodies in a bog. Mm -hmm. Uh, But there's also something about the town and kind of mythology and something happened way back when. Um, It it was pretty interesting. I mean, I would say it's pretty light on the horror. I mean, there was a certain aura that goes around, which controls certain people and they do certain things. Um, But again, well shot. Well acted. I really mm-hmm. like the lead actress in it. I thought she was very good. Um, but yeah. Uh, next up. <laughs> this, so this is another one. I, I maybe would put this on my list of the year. Just because mm-hmm. I was just. It's low budget. But I really like what they did with it. And it was okay. a total random watch. And this was Bitch Ass. Bitch Ass, huh? Bitch ass. Bitch ass. What do you think it's about? I think it's about a bitch ass. <laughs> so, like, again, I think it was on Shutter or whatever. I'm just like, okay, bitch ass, whatever. I'll just put it on. <laughs> See how it is. Starts off with Tony Todd. Um, kind of being like, a crypt, like being kind of like a crypt keeper, but it's just him, right? And he's just saying about. Well, we have had lots of um, previous movies about black horror movies, and it's he's like it's people under the stairs, and this one, and then he's like Candyman. He starts laughing and stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm kind of into it already. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, he's kind of introducing this story about um, a kind of. Uh, high school aged larger black kid and this is all kind of in the ghetto um who has been kind of physically and emotionally abused by his grandmother okay but he's still kind of like a nice guy but he's a big guy and um there's guys so kind of like adults. me i get it yep and um he was like beaten up back in the day yep but he still lives in the house. The grandma died. And then other gang members who are like younger, including one who's more of a, you know, he's still going to school and all that sort of stuff. And they go in to rob this house as part of like a gang initiation. Mm-hmm. Um, but bitch ass, which is what they called him when they were cutting him up and stuff. He's now like a serial killer. No, oh. but his thing is, um, him and his grandma always played different games. Mm-hmm. Um, and as they're going through, it's very interestingly shot. Um, as they're walking into the house, um, mm-hmm. they'll have like the, like a uh, go sign at the bottom. Like you're walking into a game and they'll mm-hmm. have like, kind of like signs, which aren't for the characters, but for the audience where it's like a uh, living room and this room and basement. Right. So they're trying to set up this kind of, game house okay um and then basically he challenges them to play different games it could be connect four where somebody may lose their arms because it's a big huge board and there's blades coming down okay um or like battleships uh where 
if you sink a battleship, you have to get stabbed by somebody. <laughs> it okay. Also, is like, okay, well, if you sink one of my ships, I get stabbed too. Um, I thought this was really good. It was really entertaining. Um, obviously, very low budget. Yeah. Not a lot of impressive, like, there's, there's a couple of kind of gory scenes, but they don't look very good. Right. Acting's a little up and down. Um, but I was just so, like, random watch i'm like i was kind of blown away by it i really nice. recommend people to watch uh bitch ass i thought it was I, I, fun you know i will say that one of the one of my biggest surprises of the year was a movie i probably avoided for a long time because it just seemed like so, it would be full of of tropes and 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 just things that i wouldn't enjoy but i wound up really really liking it and this is going to sound terrible when i say it but the blackening turned out to be a really good film have you seen it? Yeah. What? You walked away. You just walked away in the middle of my conversation, huh? Sorry. I thought you'd be talking for longer. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I started the blackening. Yeah. Um, because I really liked the trailer. Yeah, I, I did not. I, I just, I just haven't finished. I, like, I've watched the first ten minutes, and it's yep. not like I didn't like it. I just got was distracted with other things, and I haven't yep. gone back to it. But um, I'm, I'm curious to see what you think. I, it was a really big surprise for me because I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I mean, the, like I said, the trailer looked awesome. Yeah, and like the first ten minutes, I thought was pretty funny. So, um, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be uh, finishing that at some point. Good. Uh, okay. The only other thing that I've watched. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Jim, you're you're a child of the '80s, right? Am I? Apparently. Okay. So, Indiana Jones. Yes. What do you think of that series? Um, it should have stopped at number two. What? You're. So there's something wrong with me. No, there's not. Um, part three is maybe the quintessential um, Indiana Jones. Movie. Are you high? So, so what's part three about, Jim? Well, let's see. We had Raiders of the Lost Ark, mm-hmm. and then Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Mm-hmm. Number th- what was number three? Was Sean Connery? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where the name the dog right. Indiana. Yes. Yeah, I, I just, I didn't enjoy it at all. You didn't enjoy Indiana Jones and the Holy Grail? I did not, no. And then Crystal Skull was just ridiculous. Yeah, that's where they kind of was like, oh, Jesus Christ, yes, uh, Harrison Ford is really old now, let's do a lot of, he's really old jokes, and yep. let's do some, like, stupid CGI. And- well, the- the whole point of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was to pass the baton right. onto the Shia LaBeouf character, and then he blew up his career. So, so I watched Indiana Jones on the Dial of Destiny. Oh God! So let, let I, I'm getting very much like this. Like, I want a movie now to be ninety minutes long. Okay. I'm kind of sick of movies being way too bloated. Uh-huh. Um, you know, a movie should be the the length that it should be. And I feel sometimes they just try to overstuff a lot of the movies. Do you think that might be a, uh, related to your undiagnosed ADHD? Because we didn't have that in the 80s? <laughs> well, hang on. So think about it, though. I mean, how many movies from growing up were two and a half plus hours long? Uh- I have no idea, to be perfectly honest. There's not many. Yeah. I mean, two hours was like a long movie. Yes. Or, you know, and that's, yep. and that's fine. Because uh, my favorite part of growing up in the 80s was all of my favorite big movies, like Transformers, um, they would eventually be broken down into 30-minute episodes to watch on TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I loved that. Anyway. But- but I think, I mean, there definitely is certain movies, um, like Saving Private Ryan, or 
even like Infinity War, or there's certain movies where they they have enough content to justify the length. I've never seen Saving Private Ryan. You've never. I seen have seen. Saving. I have seen Saving Ryan's Privates. Yeah, I'm sure. Shaving. <laughs> yeah. Ryan's Privates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should watch uh, Saving Private Ryan. Is no, I'm, I'm kidding. I've, I've seen parts of it, but I'm just not a you big... No, you haven't seen parts of it, so you haven't seen it. I have seen parts of it. I just am not a big wartime film watcher. Um. Anyway, so this Indiana Jones movie... Is that what we were talking about? It is two, <laughs> is two hours and 40 minutes. Holy shit! See? No, I can't do that. No. no. Right. That's my point. This movie did not need to be two hours, <laughs> three, 40 three. minutes. So just, you know, because for all the Hollywood producers and directors that listen to our podcast, mm-hmm. let's just put this out there. Not everything needs to be a fucking Snyder cut. Yes, that's the point I was making. Yeah, you're, I, I absolutely agree. Mark... Hell has frozen over, and we agree on something. It, it's almost like your uh, New Year's resolution has already started. <laughs> so yeah, this had no, so this starts off where they have a pretty exciting intro, um, uh-huh. where they have uh, Indiana Jones back in kind of like nineteen forties Nazi thing, but they've but he's always in the fighting Nazis. No. Yes. Now he's only done yes. twice. No, 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 Raiders of the Lost Ark. He was up against yeah, that's the Nazis. One, that's one, right? Uh, I I know for a fact, uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. He was no, fighting Nazis. No, he wasn't. You're wrong. Yes, dude. he was. They were, they were chasing they him were to Russian, death. The skull. They were communist Russia. It was a cold. No, 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 no. Jim, how much? Okay, so um, I will bet you right now. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> you will bet that, me nothing. That um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is based in the sixties, and it was a Cold War, and it wasn't Nazis. You're right; it was Soviets. So you can send me that money any way you want. Yeah, I'll Venmo it to you. Right. Anyway, so but they do the de aging thing, right? Yeah. And Here's the thing with de-aging. Mm-hmm. I, I, I almost wonder mm-hmm. if somebody, if like a kid, like five-year-old or whatever, right, right. doesn't know anything about Indiana Jones and their parents are watching it and mm-hmm. they're looking at it, whether they would notice it. Um, I think they might. But I think once you know somebody's being de-aged, you're looking out for it. And of course. And it's that Valley thing. Um, it's, so, let me ask you, is the de-aging as bad as it was for Jeff Bridges in Tron Legacy? Never seen it. Oh. but obviously, yeah, I, I ob- really like Tron Legacy. Obviously not, because this is many, many years after that. Right? Well, no, but I, so in Tron Legacy, it lo- he looks like a cartoon in the scenes where he's supposed right. to be younger. Now, now the, this isn't, like I said, you set a five-year-old down. Maybe mm-hmm. they wouldn't notice because right. they don't know it's somebody who's been the aged. Right. But there's just certain parts where it's just like, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can see that and it's distracting. Yeah. Uh, the good thing about it is Toby Jones is in it. I like Toby Who? Jones. And they bring back Sala. Who? The guy from the first one. Um, John. Reese Davies. Davies. Yeah. For a little bit. But it's just, again, I keep on seeing this in my head. It's the once once upon a time in Hollywood, um, Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at the screen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it's like, look, look, there's something from our past. Look, 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 look. (laughs) I'm like, it doesn't do anything for the story. Right. Um, And this is... I just feel this is like a very, I don't know, like anemic version of Indiana Jones. Like, 
it's like it, it seems it's, like it's a very bloated version of Indiana Jones at two hours well, and forty minutes. It's it's like a cover version, right? It's like a it's like a band playing a bad cover version. Okay, of a great song, right? Um, and you know, freaking God bless. Um, what's his name? Uh, he's eighty years old in this, and like mm. he's still jumping around and stuff in certain scenes. Uh, Harrison Ford, and it's yeah. like. Good for him. Good for him. Yep. But that does not make an entertaining movie. And I, I think it was James Mangold that made this. And he made um, Logan, which is a phenomenal movie about yeah, was. an older character. Yep. So I don't know if this was like studio stuff or who wrote it or, or whatever. It just seemed like um, Liza Minnelli when she's old. Okay. Uh, just to try and put it in the gay terms for you. Um, just a bloated shell of the former self. I I don't I don't know if she was that, but it sounded good. Um, <laughs> and and the thing is, they have um his goddaughter, who is Toby Jones's daughter, in this as like the main protagonist really mm-hmm. she's very unlikable in it um which is fine because her character i think is supposed to be unlikable um, right but here's the thing right so even with all the other uh movies being objectively bizarre in oh it's the ark of the covenant and it does this MacGuffin, right, right. or it's holy grail and does this MacGuffin, right this dial of destiny, which is apparently something Archimedes came up with, just seems so foreign. Even mm-hmm. though, like, they have the like alien crystal skulls, <laughs> but apparently, this MacGuffin opens up. Do you want me to spoil it or not? Sure, go ahead. It's not uh, going to bother me any because I'm not going to so, watch so, it. So, so spoilers for everyone. So it's uh, it's this dial which apparently Archimedes came up with. Is it a dial of destiny? That could figure out uh, rips in time and space. So time travel. Right. Okay. And I liked oh, it better when it was a DeLorean. But anyway. Also, Mads Mikkelsen is in this as the chief protagonist. I, I do like Mads Mikkelsen. I do, but he's kind of wasted in this too. But so they so again, this is like we're we're like two hours into this movie, right? Plus, and they have the final part of the movie, and this is where Mads Mikkelsen, um, it's gone back to full being a Nazi, right? So this is like obviously, a, a, this is set in like nineteen sixty nine because they're talking about going to the moon and stuff and. One of the things they do get right is, um, yeah, the U.S. took a bunch of Nazi scientists and used yeah. them to work on the space program. Yeah, Project Paperclip. Right, and um, so he's he's back in full Nazi regalia with some of his henchmen, which apparently are Nazis also, which seemed weird because they were CIA, but then they weren't. Uh, it, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so they. Um, they get into this uh, plane, which Indiana Jones is in, um, uh-huh. and they, they're they trying to find this uh, rift in time and space so they can go back and help win the war for Hitler. Huh. But what they find out is, wh- what it is, is it goes back to the time of Archimedes. Oh. So they go back and it's all like Roman triumphs and like ancient warfare and all that sort of stuff, which is pretty cool. I like that part. Right. I like that era. But there's a part where Indiana Jones is kind of like injured and he's going to like die if he stays there. Yeah. And he's telling his goddaughter, just leave me here. I just want to be with like Archimedes and all this cool stuff that I live my life. Right. Wanting to see. And then they bring him back. So and they then, essentially don't listen to the old man. Right. They bring him back, and then he has to live his life out there. Like a, Poor guy. 
present day, where um, Shia LaBeouf died in the war, Mm -hmm. and he's divorced from his wife, Marianne. But then she comes back and stuff, but whatever. Like it would so have is, been, is Karen it, Allen in the film? It would have been a much better ending if they had just left him in the past. Is because Karen I, Allen in this film again? Yes, that's awesome. Exactly. I like her, but only for a minute or two. Um, but I think it would have worked much better to say we're going to leave you in the past right. because that's been his whole career, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's so, an archaeologist okay. for Christ's sake. Anyway. Uh, this was five out of ten. Okay. And how much of that? How much of that was deducted because of the runtime? Um. So just looking at it overall, I I, I think the runtime does break down a point or two, yep. just because it didn't need to be that. It didn't right. like sub sub with the nostalgia point. Right, we don't need to have some of these characters coming back and do nothing. Right, you don't need to go on and on about how Indiana Jones is really old. Right. Um. But yeah, I mean, I would never watch it again just because it's two it's two hours and forty minutes. <laughs> right. Entertaining. I mean, it's just not that. That's longer than most of our podcast episodes, and we talk a lot. Yeah, and we're not entertaining at all. Exactly. So, yeah. that's all I watched. No, um, well, I, I finished, uh, or I got up to the end of the last Invincible. Oh yeah, I episode. have not. I have not been. I have not completely caught up yet. I think there's another one with. Um, they have like a special episode with the woman superhero, sort of Adam Eve. Yep. Uh, I haven't watched that, but I watched all the way up through there. Well, we'll have to talk about that when I get a chance to fin- yeah. to get caught up. It's kind of weird. Yeah, definitely is. Anyway, Jim. So I I don't have any movies that I've really watched between Christmas and New Year's. Um, so I don't have much to talk about. I did discover a new series of books called. Um, oh, where is it? Hang on. Oh, it I starts start- with. Sorry, yeah. sorry. I I did start Utopia. Which is a um, audio book from Lincoln Childs. Yeah, but I'm only like twenty minutes into it. So, the, <laughs> I discovered this book. It's called "It's a Wonderful Midlife Crisis." This is about this book series is about a woman who uh, just turns forty and is now uh, a month after turning forty. Um, gained the ability to talk uh, to see the dead. She is what they call a death counselor and she helps people cross over. She helps them finish their unfinished business and guides them into the light or the dark wherever they happen to be going, right? Mm-hmm. So the, I did not know this when I saw it because it was included with my Audible because you know it's one of those that's included in the catalog so you don't need to use a credit to buy it. Mm-hmm. There are 10 books in this series. Wow. 10 books. I'm now on book number four Whoa. in in three days. It is it's funny, it's irreverent. Um, I can honestly relate because I am north of forty, so I can appreciate what she's going through in parts of her life. I um, it, it's just it's it's a fun, lighthearted read with no real stakes. You know what I mean? So it's just it's just a fun escapism. Um, I enjoy the humor a lot. I there's a lot of uh there's a lot of great relationship stuff, you know, family drama, you no, know, not family drama, but um relationship drama. So, you know, oh, you know, I there's this secret that my grandmother's been keeping, but she doesn't know she's keeping it cuz somebody programmed her to believe this way or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um that they work through that I appreciate. Um so I I I'm really enjoying the hell out of this. And it's funny the the titles of the books are funny, you know, it starts off with it's a wonderful midlife crisis. Then whose midlife crisis is it anyway? A most excellent midlife crisis. And then my midlife crisis, my rules is the one that I just started. Mm-hmm. So I've been, I've been obsessing over them. It, it's, I would consider it an urban fantasy. It's, it's very, um, 
probably very it 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 does have a lot of I don't know how to say this. It's almost like a uni- unitarian Christian <clears throat> religion. Like God isn't what you think he is, but there's all these archangels and there's the grim reaper and there's the, you know, the, the arbitrator between heaven and hell. So it, it, the mythos is very Christian based, but it's not really preachy. Why? If that makes any sense. Well, it sounds like they're um, putting in different elements. Yeah, they are. And it's like the grim reaper isn't Christian. Right. I, I'm just saying it, it. the mythology is very like Michael, the archangel is there. Um, there's the angel of mercy. So it gets very, it gets very into a Christian mythos, but it also deals with other sides. Like the main character is dating the grim reaper. So it, it doesn't get preachy, but it does like, it goes into some voodoo stuff with like a, a soul keeper, which is somebody who can hide the souls oh, voodoo. from an angel. Huh? huh? Voodoo stuff, huh? Yeah. It, it's a little bit of a mix, but it focuses wow. pretty heavily on the Christian stuff. I, but I, I was I was maybe in the voodoo central of uh, the U.S. Yeah, because the the soul keeper is a descendant of Marie Laveau. Get it? Mm. Yeah. We saw right. her. Uh, uh, Great. Awesome. Yeah. So I I've really enjoyed it so far. I'm looking forward to it. Bye, everyone. <laughs>